We are live, baby. Hey, you guys. Welcome to Doctors in Demand. I'm with my brilliant friend and colleague, Dr. Kara <laughs> Burkhart, who's going to drop some knowledge on us today. And we get to have a good talk about more testing that you should be doing to help you assess your health. Yeah, this is this is super awesome, right, Hillary? Because uh, when we grew up, I was really putting this in terms of, you know, how people look at medicine and health. And when we grew up, my grandparents, you know, they went to the doctor, they had something wrong, the doctor gave them a pill, right? It was like, okay, that's how Didn't sometimes the doctors go to them? I mean, in your grandparents' age, like there were also like house visits and stuff. So that, maybe that's it. The doctor came to their house with a bag of pills right? and like a stethoscope. But no, it, the point being, they really put the doctor up on this pedestal. It was like as equal to their priest. You know, whatever the doctor says is just gold. And that's what we do. And they didn't question anything. They just took the pills, didn't ask about side effects, didn't do anything. And there are many yes, examples. They didn't know. They didn't know. It's there like me pills. bringing my car to the car mechanic. I have no freaking idea. You could, they, could, they could tell me anything. And I'm like, awesome. Yeah. And they sometimes that does happen. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so, so in, it has just happened to me um, <laughs> because I cannot figure out. I'm like, well, yeah, yeah, I'll sign. Give me the bill, I'll do it. But um, <laughs> this is really cool because this is like a different way of approaching health, right? It's a total shift of we don't have to get to be, you know, adults who are like 50 to 70, that age group the amount of people who are on medication. So this is a like centers for disease control stat, like 50 year olds, which is like, you know, us 50 to like 70 year olds in the last 30 days, seven out of 10 of those folks have taken a prescription medication. So this is sort of where we are as a culture. And what I'm trying to say today is, Hey, we can do markers as far as blood work goes. It could be blood. It can be urine tests. We can do markers and see what are our risks and how do we mitigate them? And if we take steps now, then we don't get to be older and older and on more medications and all these kind of damage. So that's like the point of today. It's a totally different way of thinking about health and being proactive is the name of the game now. It it, really I mean, I just, I'm getting to spend some time with my beautiful mom and she's had some health issues. She had um, leukemia and I needed a bone marrow transplant and like Stanford medical stamps, like Stanford medical center is the most insanely awesome place. And her bone marrow transplant was amazing and the whole nine. But what was, what's really interesting is like when you go through any kind of major procedure like that in your, she was in her late sixties, yeah. you know, you're just set up for more things. And so we were talking about how she goes from doctor's appointment to doctor's appointment you know, she goes to see her cardiologist. Then she sees the follow-up bone marrow transplant person. And, and, and they're looking at some overall stuff, but not really. Then the gynecologist that she's got some carpal tunnel. So then she goes to get that looked at. She, with all the different doctor's appointments, had missed her primary appoint, appoint not missed. It just got delayed, couldn't see the doctor. Da, da, da. There's like nobody orchestrating her health. Mm-hmm. And like, then one of the basic things, she's like me, I'm like her and my grandmother before her, we all have hypothyroidism. So mm -hmm. her thyroid medication had just gotten like really underdone. And, you know, so she was having more fatigue and some, you know, just feeling more spacey than normal. And, you know, and so this is the thing that gets really hard as we age, that the way that the current medical system is, is that you go to see the body part doctor, hopefully you have a good relationship with a doctor or hopefully you have a great relationship with a naturopathic doctor that's trying because we are the doctors that we're not specialists. So we are generalists. We're looking at the whole body as much as we can. Right. And hopefully what you're doing is you're doing all the work now so that you don't have to see the body part doctors as much. Right. Because then it's like you're running from doctor's appointment to doctor's appointment and, and nobody is looking at your total health care. So tell us one of the, some of the things to look for so that we can prevent 
running from body part doctor to body part doctor? Well, it's all about being proactive and we have all this information. So let's like put it into play. So one of the things I'm always so frustrated about being a doctor is that we have the research, but getting it into clinical practice and to people takes so many years. It's like 10 to 20 years, but let's not do that. We have the research. Let's take some steps and do all this preventative medicine stuff that we have the data on now. So there's this marker that people don't talk about enough. Um, and it's an oxidative stress metabolite. So it's not a marker of something you can get from food or from the environment or anything. Your body is making this in response to damage to DNA. So that's a good thing. So you're not going to in any way have it from something else, it's from your DNA being damaged. I would really like to know if my DNA that codes for every everything that I'm making is being damaged because that's associated with oxidative stress, cancer, cancer, joint pain in the future. I would like my brain to work. I'm really stressed about getting dementia. I know, Kara and I, we're, all we're going to do for years is talk about how not to get dementia because... Yes. <laughs> Because it's like I'm like the way, ultimate loss of control. I just can't. No dementia, it. no strokes. No dementia, no strokes. No, no dementia. I don't want no. any of those things. And I feel like I have this data pool to pull from. So anyway, I want everybody to think about this oxidative stress metabolite, which is called 8-OHDG. And the longer name is 8-hydroxy-2-deoxyguanosine, which Hillary will tell us guanosine is one of those bases of our DNA. So breaking down like something that damages our DNA, like radiation, um, oxidative stress, all those kind of things, like things we know damage our DNA, um, will produce this marker and you measure it in the urine. So it's really an easy thing to capture. And so high levels of this 8-OHDG are associated with chronic inflammatory states, diabetes, atherosclerosis, kidney disease, all kinds of intestinal diseases, and even cancers, um, depression, breast, prostate cancer, so many things that we're trying to prevent as we age that we run this marker all the time, right? And when it comes back, it's in a full panel that we, we run for sex hormones for people and stress hormones for people. That's the panel. Like we usually see it on, but I flip to that last page. It's always like the last page. It's also in a nutritional panel that, that we've been doing for years, but it's always like the last page is sort of like in with like markers of inflammation or oxidative stress. And that's the first marker I look at because I'm like, Hey, if this thing's high, we want to pull that down because we could prevent all this stuff for people. It's like a big deal. And so one thing that is so easy to do that I just, you know, instead of like stressing people out, like I'm getting oxidative stress and, you know, I don't want to leave, leave you all thinking that, but I want to give you something you can do. So even if you don't know your number's high, one thing that brings it down that really helps with oxidative stress is green tea. So I was going to say, she's going to talk about green tea right I'm now. I'm going to talk about green tea. Because green tea is so good for us. Um, my teenage son <laughs> makes a really nice, he has like ceremonial grade matcha at my house. You know, this is of course what we have at, uh, at our house. He makes that, he makes it in the morning. So think about this. He's doing a ritual. This is a 16 year old before school. And you know, he's kind of stumbling around, like not safe to drive. Like he's totally still asleep, but he does this ritual. He makes his matcha. He's put, you know, he's mixing the matcha. He puts it in walnut milk and has it iced every morning before school. And I have to say, since he started doing that, as opposed to drinking coffee before school, I think he's calmer and more like, it's like a nicer way to start the day really. Cause you have all that theanine and green tea, but I'm thrilled because all of the sports he does and all the damage on all his joints and the repetitive stress injuries he's getting, cause he's quite an athlete. You know, I'm like, great, that awesome green tea that is really high in antioxidants, really, really high, that ceremonial grade, you know, it's organic and it's like perfect. And you spend so much money for the smallest amount of it. It's ridiculous. But anyway, whipping that up and having it every morning is just such a good health thing for him because I know, hey, we're preventing these things from happening later on. So I'm pretty mm -hmm. pumped about it. I'm not so pumped that he got into using my walnut milk. <laughs> Now I'm constantly running out of that. <laughs> you got me into that brand, that Elmhurst brand. And I love, I just their, love their nut milk so much. If, oh, if anybody from Elmhurst is listening, we love you. And please just certify organic. But other I would than rather it be organic, but for amazing. 
the oh, hazelnut the milk, the I hazelnut know. milk's off the chain. My, my son makes um, his kind of morning shake before he goes and lifts. It's We both have these teenage boys that like my son goes and lifts weights in the morning. <laughs> and so he's making hazelnut milk um, and protein powder and whatever because he's really trying to bulk up so he doesn't get his you know, so he is more powerful playing football. And yes, I have a son playing football. So I'm trying to come up with all the ways That's to help prevent brain. his brain because we know that little, it's not the best sport, obviously for brain health. So um, the, the thing that I love when my, I'm going to circle back to my mom, bless my mom. Mm -hmm. She has no idea. I'm probably talking to you about her on the show right now. She's right out in my kitchen, but she went to see one of the most amazing naturopathic doctors ever who's been voted physician of the year many times over and over in the naturopathic doctor community. Her name is Lise Elshuler. She's amazing. She works with Andrew Weil at, um, in Arizona and she's a cancer specialist. And the first thing she did with my mom, when my mom got diagnosed with what's called MDS, with, which is bone marrow change and bone marrow suppression is, um, green tea. And she said three to four times a day, if there's nothing else that you do for your cancer and to slow the progression of your cancer, if this is the one thing that you can do and just turn it into your lifestyle. So she had her getting organic decaffeinated green tea, jasmine tea. And my mom has just like boxes, left, had boxes at one point left over. I still find like remnants of all these like organic jasmine tea, green tea bags. But it's literally, if if that's one of the rituals that you create from for anti-aging, that's amazing. And how many patients do we use L-theanine a lot as mm -hmm. a nervine as a nerve tonic, as a stress response, because another thing that's going to drive oxidative damage is our internal stress. So yeah, it's external stressors, radiation, getting smashed into by a football player, being on an airplane, um, you know, all the different exposed to pesticides and toxins, but internal stressors create oxidative damage as well. So like we want to just calm our system down mm -hmm. as we're taking an antioxidant. So that's what makes green tea so potent. It contains the L-theanine, which is the nervous system calmative, as well as all these ridiculously potent antioxidants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So training yourself to like green tea is a really good health move, right? Did you see- And matches- especially matcha is like next level intense. Like, yeah, but if you put it with one of those milks, I think that's like his trick. Like, you know what I mean? It's, he puts it with, with the um, walnut milk and he thinks it's really delicious. So, but I want to say, <laughs> did you see the study Hillary you would like this on French fries and anxiety and depression? Like the more French fries you eat, the more likely you are to have anxiety, depression. So I was thinking about that in relation to this marker, you know. How I'm, many French fries we just ate on our trip in Boston? I think we had French fries at three meals. That. Did we three times? It's very unusual for us. We don't. Or really maybe two. French times. bistro, and then we did. We went to a bistro. French bistro, and it yeah. came. We ate salad, the salad, and we ate that other delicious salad. Um, at the Italian restaurant, that was unbelievable. Those greens were unbelievable. But yeah, we eat we don't even eat French fries. But we very we very rarely eat French fries. Probably that's like two French fry uh, intakes in like whatever the last six months or whatever we've we've had. Um, but a lot of people eat them all the time, right? So we don't really eat fried food very often. But we will when we're at a French bistro and it's uh, it was in duck fat or whatever. It was delicious. I, I enjoyed those French fries. But anyway, I just, this was last week. And then I came across this headline about this. And I was thinking about oxidative stress and how the reason we don't eat fried food is because of this, right? You create all this oxidative stress and look, then they actually in research have linked it to neurodegenerative changes like inflammation in our brains, like these inflammatory chemicals that are created by eating French fries, even if they're duck fat fried and completely delicious and covered with salt and they were yummy. That whole thing creates all this inflammation that crosses the blood brain barrier. These specific chemicals cross the blood brain barrier and cause like inflammation in our brains and damage. So think about that, like anxiety, depression, how many people are suffering from those things and eating fried foods because maybe they just don't have the time to cook and they're getting takeout or whatever. And I would say the oils that ours that we ate are very different from what the average American are eating as far as French fries, but something like that 
would increase oxidative stress in the body and measuring this marker would see where you are on that. Now we're not going to measure it after we ate those twice last week, but in another month, it'll look good, good in the green zone again. Oh my God, it takes a whole month. Okay. But the, the thing also that it needs to be extended, I, you know, you might go through your list and be like, well, I don't eat fried food or I don't eat fast food, but do you eat potato chips, even if they're organic? Right. Like, so there's a, my, my patient population, you know, they tend to buy snacks and, and myself included, like I buy snacks for my kids mm-hmm. and yeah, they're organic, but they're still, there's still bad oils and, or crackers, right. So, mm-hmm. or chips, so potato, like, um, tortilla chips that are corn that have been fried in hydrogenated oil, organic or not, if it's still sunflower, safflower oil, you're causing inflammatory process in your brain. Absolutely. And that inflammatory process is going to contribute not only to oxidative damage, but to anxiety, depression. Yeah. So Before this next show, I literally just had a teenager tell me that when she stopped her probiotic for after two weeks, she noticed her anxiety got so much better. And then she took her probiotic and it was like wildly different. So Let's do anxiety and probiotics next. Mm-hmm. And um, things, other things that are very obvious that raise this 8 OHDG marker are things like cigarette smoking, xenobiotics, which is like the estrogens in our environment, you know, like the chemical plastic. synthetics, um, phthalates, all the things that are endocrine disruptors, those will increase this, this marker. So it's kind of a good screen of if you think you're living a healthy lifestyle, that might be a way to say, okay, whoa, this marker is not where it should be. And it's showing that your DNA is actually being damaged. What can we do to mitigate that? And you might be able to find something um, that's really off. So, so, so I think the taking control of this is the, the message here. We know this stuff. Let's just test it and fix it. And are you ordering it from like Quest or LabCorp? It's more from the HUMAP tests that you're in the, and the nutrient density, nutrient eval. Well, it's all kinds of functional medicine tests. Or yeah. Okay. Internet, yeah. So work with your functional medicine doctor, naturopathic doctors, naturopathic doctors are going to help you out here or mm-hmm. functional medicine doctors. Yeah. And we're going to talk about more of these markers. I mean, this is not the only one. There's uh, a number of them that we're going to be going through of, Hey, let's review these and see where we are and see what we can fix because it's fixable. These are preventable diseases. I'd be pretty pumped if my brain's sharp, my joints are going, I'm not shrinking. And I feel good energy when I'm like, oh my God, I can't shrink. I'm five feet tall. What do I need to do? I got to get back on the, I got to get back in Pilates. No shrinking for me. No shrinking for you. You're not doing it. All right. Great to see you today. I love you. Happy Wednesday. Bye. Bye.